The Spiral Abyss, the hardest content Genshin has to offer. Sometimes it can be pretty difficult, but most of the time for a late game player like me, it's pretty easy. I mean, hey, Hoyoverse infamously said they didn't want any of their end game content to cause the player base anxiety. Well, that was a fucking lie. This Abyss Floor 12 is absolute hell. Chamber one has four waves of monsters, three Whopper Flowers twice, and three Ancient Doritos twice. But then, oh, then we've got three Abyss Selectors at the same time. What's worse, one of them is Hydro and the other two are Cryo. So luckily they give you a lot of time to strategize because you're frozen half the time. Did I mention you have to beat these two Chuckle Fox too? Chamber two gives us a bit of a break, needing to beat the Dendro Chicken and the Thunder Manifestation. Except sometimes the Dendro Chicken goes berserk and one shots you, while the Thunder Manifestation loves to fly around the whole map. That's all right, buddy. It's not like I'm in a hurry or anything. And the finale chamber, chamber three, does not disappoint with four level 100 consecrated beasts in two separate waves if you've never had the displeasure of fighting these guys well they never stay grouped their collision boxes are harder to navigate around than eula's ass at angel share and pretty much every attack they have one shots you if you can make it out alive against those beasts you finally have to fight a very team restrictive triple elemental shield generating catholic priest lector all within three minutes on each floor to obtain 36 stars anything less than 36 stars to me is a failure so was i up for the challenge oh you bet i was did i mention i'm only using four star characters and four star weapons no pacifier kazuha goo goo gaga baby mode no hutao charge attacks vaping for 100k damage every second and i couldn't even dust off that skyward spine i got in patch 1.1 even if i wanted to but real talk guys there's nothing wrong with using five star characters i'm not trying to be holier than thou or anything like that i just really enjoy pushing myself pushing my characters, pushing my team building skills to the absolute limit. Even some of the Genshin community's best players gave up on this challenge. I win to lose, one of the smartest theory crafters and guide makers, a content creator that I respect a ton said this. I tried this many times with just four star only characters with only four star weapons as well. And I was not able to even come close to nine starring this Abyss 12 with only four star characters. For me personally, I think this is actually the hardest Abyss 12 to nine star with, you know, just like four star only characters or whatever that we've ever had. I'm sure some, you know, hardcore grinder and gamer uh, is gonna be able to do that. So that's me right now the hardcore grinder and this is how i did it i really hope you guys enjoy the vid so obviously the first thing we had to do was decide a game plan and our teams side one was luckily not very limiting in terms of whatever characters i could choose the only thing we had limiting us was chamber two's dendro chicken it has a whopping 80 percent base resistance to dendro damage so some of the game's easiest most broken teams like hyper bloom and aggravate were going to have a tougher time meeting the dps check here but this was not going to be a problem for me because i already had the dream team lined up for side one Shang Ling and Rosaria is my favorite four-star duo to use hands down. It is no secret that Shang Ling is quite frankly the GOAT, one of the most broken characters in the game. This is due to her massive damage from Pyronado, which has no ICD. This means internal cooldown. Skipping the nerd talk, it means her Pyronado can cause a reaction every single time it meets another element. You may notice something like Mona's autos, only vape every once in a while. This is ICD in action. So Shang Ling's burst has special properties, meaning it's gonna do a shit ton of damage. And you know who else has this property on their burst? Rosaria. Her burst drops the massive ice lance that will perfectly melt with Shangling's burst every single time. I still think Rosaria is heavily slept on as a massive reverse melt DPS. Building her as a free support or a Eula support is cool and all, but it does not unlock her max potential. The team is rounded out with Bennett and Sucrose. They are no brainers for any Shangling national team. All right, Bennett boosts Shangling and Rosaria's attack to massive heights, as well as healing and generating extra energy for Shangling, while Sucrose can group enemies, swirl for big damage, and shred resistances with Viridescent Venom. I know this team has what it takes, even with no shields anywhere to be seen. But side two, that's where all the trouble started. Looking at the floor lineup, we had to break through three cryo shields and two hydro shields, an enemy that is immune to electro completely, and the lector that generates cryo, hydro, and pyro shields. This is a good time for me to bring this up. 
you can actually beat a floor, let's say 4-1 with a team perfect to beat it. Get the three stars, leave, go into a new Abyss run with a totally different team, perfect for beating floor two, take your sweet ass time on floor one again, since you already have the three stars, and rinse and repeat to beat floor three. I don't use this method for any of my challenges, all right? I go in with eight characters, locked in two teams, and do it in one single run. So getting back to the floors, aggravate teams were just unusable here, and Hyper Bloom was gonna have a very hard time breaking through all these shields in a timely manner. I did try Hyper bloom for like an hour on stream but i knew it wasn't gonna work out you are practically required to have pyro to get through the cryo lectors and the baptist lectors cryo shield then the hydro lector shields could be taken out with cryo or dendro and maybe electro could slowly chip away at it but electro is useless against the thunder manny and dendro is way more potent at destroying the shields anyway so with all this data in play the answer was obvious it had to be toma burgeon this team would apply pyro hydro and dendro in heavy amounts while dishing out a ton of damage through stacking em on toma so toma and xing chou were absolute must-haves while i chose yao yao as my dendro applicator she can apply dendro through her skill and her burst while healing the team a bunch and i knew the healing was going to be necessary to stay alive finally this last slot was precarious there didn't seem to be a character that was like perfect for the job i needed someone who could help break these shields more and hopefully generate some energy for the team so I decided on Fischl. She has a high DPS, low field time. She'd help break the shields a bit and she generates a lot of energy for the team. The only problem was I wasn't super experienced in using Toma Burton teams. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Feels frozen. Are you really still up? I was looking like an expert Toma player out there. You would have never guessed that I've never played Toma after that. I was up for the challenge though, so the runs began. Oh my god, get fucked, idiot. Okay. This is the dumbest floor of all time, respectfully, with Riz. Does Uegwe actually freeze? This is cringe? You're telling me, homie. Like, <laughs> Fissile by Royal. Decree. Come on. <sighs> really close. That was our closest run. I'm getting so fucking tilted. They won't stop. They won't. They just keep going underground. They keep going underground. They keep going underground! Okay, this is fast as fuck. It's not even close. Well, I'm glad you're having fun, Neo. We're gonna have a whole lot more fun when I fucking beat this in 10 years. When my grandkids see this shit, dude. So day one ended in uh, failure, to say the least. I knew chamber one was gonna be the hardest chamber of the whole run. So luckily I was at least learning muscle memory for grouping the Whopper Flowers and min-maxing my speed on side one. But I knew something on side two had to change. Alrighty guys. That's gonna do it from your boy. Fuck the abyss. <laughs> I'm not giving up, obviously. You know, I'll try it tomorrow. <laughs> I started off day two by trying a DPS Yanfei over Fischl on side two. On paper, she's able to apply pyro at all times with her normal attacks and generate more pyro particles for Toma, but I quickly found with the cryo electors applying the slowing ice and with how squishy she was, she felt more like a liability. So I had a new idea. I mean, I agree that pyro is the best, but she's just kind of a meme. I'd rather fucking use Zin Yang. My sack greatsword is level 20. I think I have to run five. Zin Yang, baby, yeehaw! Okay, that didn't feel great, but it also didn't feel like that bad, I guess. Six fifty. 
I have to abandon two. Oh! I switched up the build a bit to get a little bit more ER on everybody. I even leveled up a sack greatsword for Zinyan, hoping the extra, you know, skill cast would help me break Lecter shields. But turns out you can't get the passive to activate when you hit a shield. We were once again super close, but came up short. I was really thinking it might not be possible with the characters I have built up. I needed a day to clear my head and come back with a new plan. So over my day off, I was talking about the runs with my roommate, Mike, who also plays Genshin. And after some back and forth, we came up with a new plan, but it was gonna require some grinding. Like I said before, Burgeon was the play, hands down. But how could we improve it? That's when it hit us, the dynamic duo to save the day, Kale and Yan Fei. Yao Yao's healing was great, of course, but she was a little bit inconsistent without her burst up. She wasn't applying enough dendro. Yuegue's cooldown was really long, and Yuegue would even target the wrong enemy sometimes. Oh, and did I mention Yuegue can even get frozen? Like, come on, Hoeyvers. So that's where our favorite forest ranger came into play with a way shorter cooldown on skill and a large, long lasting AoE dendro burst. Kale was a great fit. And just like that, we came crawling back to Yan Fei. She wasn't very happy about us being unfaithful to her, but luckily, she took us back. Yanfei again, great on paper, breaking shields, generating energy for Toma. Her only problem was the DPS build wasn't working. Allow me to introduce you to Yanfei's C4, a constellation that allows her to take on an entirely different build. When she casts her burst, she now creates a shield equal to 45% of her max HP. With this, Shield Fei is born, giving the team way more defensive abilities after Yao Yao got laid off. So with more Dendro app, Pyro app, and Pyro particles for Toma, the only thing we were lacking was healing because these lectors are just that brutal. That's when the answer popped into our heads as if it was descended from Celestia itself. Who would have guessed? that a free to play weapon from patch 1.0 was the hero we needed all along, Prototype Amber. The HP substat makes Yanfei's shield bigger, it generates 18 energy back to Yanfei when she uses her burst, and most importantly of all, heals the whole party for 18% of their health whenever she casts burst. Yeah, the only problem was I've never crafted Prototype Amber and I was really low on ore. So I spent my Sunday morning farming all the ore on the map to get the 200 I needed to craft five of these. I also spent all my resin that day on weapon materials to get Prototype Amber to level 90, as well as some talent materials for Kale and some EXP books to get her levels up as much as I could. With no more resin, and no more time, this was it. These are the pieces we had. I knew this was gonna be our best possible chance to clear the challenge. So on the third day, the final day I had given myself to complete this challenge, I booted up the stream to give this one last ride. Day three, no fucking around. I can't do this forever. I can't play this forever. I will lose my sanity. It has to be today. Eight fifty five, dude. Eight fifty five. After doing this run so many times, I had developed a huge amount of unspoken muscle memory and strategy for the fort. Running back at the beginning of the fort caused the Whopper Flowers to all teleport to me. And if you keep your character and camera facing forward, they'll appear in front of you to group them up. I also knew I needed to save Sucrose's first burst of the floor for the second wave to group them up consistently. The Dorito on this side was the one you have to attack first and the other two will come to you if you do this. For some reason, it doesn't work on the other side. Same with the second wave. I made sure to save Shangling's burst for the second wave, closing it out at a very fast one minute and seven second clear. For the Abyss Mages, I pushed them together using unit collision and then I iframe the first attack with Toma's burst. I always run behind the Hydra Lector because he always jumps back after you hit him for the first time, making him group up with the other Lectors. After the Lector shields go up, I avoid using Xing Cho's skill. Since it's what self applies Hydra to your character, I need to avoid getting frozen as much as possible.
Chamber two! Yeah, I was pretty excited to have finally climbed that mountain, all right? Let's go, homies! I was still pretty hype after that last one. All right, give me a break. The chicken was rotisseried, and the thunder manifestation was easy pickings, bodied with over a minute to spare. I waited to make sure Xing Cho and the rest of the team had max energy for the final chamber. Destroyed. Absolutely melted. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got one shot. First try. Yeah, they really are bastards. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, I was feeling myself a little too much. All right, I got humbled. I got humbled. Let's go. This lector is different from the overworld one. He summons the same three shields every time here in the list. Cryo, Hydro, then Pyro. Yes, dude, yes! Okay, okay. Oh, that hurts. This chamber had two major problems. One, that was my own huge mistake. I was so excited after defeating the lectors, I didn't realize how easy chamber two would be. So I rushed to kill the chicken as fast as possible and didn't make sure the team had full energy for the next chamber. So I had to start every single run out with Bennett passing his Vivonius particles to Shangling to funnel her to her burst, which slowed down the run by at least five seconds and gave me less burst to iframe these bastards attacks. And the second was Bennett. I know, the god of Genshin Impact, the one who can do no wrong. Well, he was doing me some wrong. Bennett's burst applies pyro to characters in his burst, which is usually a good thing. But against the beast, it was causing the Hydro Crocs attacks to vaporize my characters, one-shotting me if I ever get hit. And then it causes a burning reaction on my characters if I get hit by the Dendro Tiger, taking my health down in huge chunks. So there was a lot stacked against us here. If I survive, I'm just gonna use this as practice. Yeah. Okay, it's like 8.14 or something. Oh, dude, it's so doable, man. It's so doable. I found I had to stay on the inside of the Hydro Croc for him to stay grouped up. I missed a few particles on Shang Ling with a late switch and got hit with Rosaria, losing some time, a sloppy start. Usually when these guys separate this early, it's a dead run, but we were able to keep them grouped really well after this and clean them up, all while being perfectly positioned to aggro the Water Croc fast enough for it to not kill.
Xing Cho's burst and uptime last so long that I needed to activate it early to output the most damage I could. Xing Cho's second burst was ready at the perfect time for the Pyro Shield and to deal as much damage as possible in his weakened state. Grinding, theory crafting, and hard work paid off. What's your pleasure? These beasts is my pleasure. Respectfully. Even in my victorious stupor, we were rewarded with C4 Dia. <laughs> Let's fucking go! C4, baby! Where there is an abyss, I will always be there to clear it with my four stars, baby. Thank you all so much for watching. This was all done live on my Twitch channel where I'm streaming Genshin, doing awesome challenges like this with my amazing community all the time. So come through. Shout outs to all my patrons supporting the channel like Zick, Cloudy, Caldo, and Ken. I appreciate you. Subscribe for more banging content like this. Maybe drop a like and a comment while you're here, all right? I'll see you guys next time. Peace, everybody.